Hello, welcome to what will hopefully be the first of a series of unscripted toy collection tours showcasing my toy shelf. Ever since I started the channel, I've been asked every now and then, when am I going to ever show my collection, my toy shelf? As you all know, it's not just one toy shelf. It's a collection throughout the entire house. So I figured I'd start this series of unscripted episodes showcasing one display at a time. And to start things off, I figured I'd start from ground zero. I started my journey as an adult collector collecting Transformers. And like any serious Transformer collector, I've got myself my masterpiece display, which is my favorite display. I figured I'd start with that. So without further ado, let's go with the Autobots. So here we go. Um, my main masterpiece display, the G1 Autobots and the G1 Decepticon Season 1. It has the prime space in, our, in my room, in my bedroom with my wife. Uh, my wife is cool enough to allow me to display this stuff here. So as you can see, it's right by the TV, above the TV. So every time we're watching, I get to see my collection. Um, I don't want to show you the whole room because it's a big mess. But anyway, just for reference. So this is a quick sneak peek, the, the television, and we got the main door. And here's my toy shelf. Well, see, my wife is cool enough to allow me to, to, to display all of that. But we'll get to that on another time. So yeah, let's get started with my G1 display. I don't know if I'll be able to cover everything, but at the very least, let's do the Autobots. Okay, so let's get started with my G1 display. Autobots, season one. So in case you're wondering, probably the first thing you'll notice that something that's out of place are these, are these eggs. And sorry, this is a little side story. These are called Aventurines. They're stones. My wife, my wife is really into crystals and stones and she has them all over the house. And one day I just found these two <laughs> on my shelf. Uh, Aventurines are, you can Google about it, but they come in pairs and they're supposed to give balance and treat anxiety. So I figure they look cool on the display, you know, one on each side. So let's call them Energon Rocks. So let's get started. First up, Blue Streak. So as I've noted before, Blue Streak was one of the first Autobots, the first Transformers, official Transformers that, that's, that I got as a kid. Uh, my dad came from the States and he brought him Blue Streak and he brought him Jetfire and Megatron. And of course, next to Jetfire and Megatron, Blue Streak is kind of like a mm, icing on the cake. But, you know, because he was my first, he, he's always going to be special to me. I mean, he didn't get that much attention in the cartoon, but... I think he's due for some recognition here. So yeah, Blue Streak. Next we have Gears. I just actually made an episode on him. Uh, the, the resident grump. What can I say about him? Watch my video. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, he's not my favorite mini bot, but I have to say this, this version from Fans Toys is probably one of the best masterpiece toys that I've gotten in a, in a while, especially from Fans Toys who who are known for having some crazy engineering every now and then. But this gear is solid. Yeah. So next up behind, we have Trailbreaker. So this is, again, Fans Toys Trailbreaker. I think it's called Outrider. So Trailbreaker was one of those um, Autobots who never really stood out for me. Uh, he, I guess that was part of his character. He wasn't a flashy race car and stuff. And he was always battling with his insecurity about it. But he's dependable, right? And so... This is my second version of Trailbreaker. The first Masterpiece version I got was the one from Ocular Max. It was serviceable, but I'm kind of like, you'll notice as you see the rest of my collection, I'm, I'm kind of like a fan size fanatic. So it took a while, but when this guy came out, uh, he, he's just, I don't know, better. He's more straightforward. I like his transformation. The, 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 the Ocular Max was nice, but it was a bit, you know, uh, finicky. So I opted to switch him out for this guy. And then here, of course, is my favorite Autobot of all time, Sunstreaker. So this is the Masterpiece version, which we had to wait forever for. Uh, prior to this, I did have the Bad Cube version, Sun Surge, if I'm not mistaken, which was pretty cool. I was very happy with that. That was more of a toy version. But, you know, Takara came up with this. And yeah, sure, it's more tuned, but it's not extremely tuned. So I said it before in, in, in the review, this is probably the best masterpiece. I mean, all biases aside, yes, I know I love Sunstreaker, but this is probably the best 
masterpiece toy that Takara has come up with so far. Uh, so that's Sunstreaker. And he's so good that he makes his brother, Sideswipe, look so bad. To be fair, okay, this was the first masterpiece car. It's still decent until now, but I mean, compared to Sunstreaker, I mean, two different styles, I guess. One's more cartoon, one's more toy. So they don't really fit in too much. They tried to tune this. This is not the original Sideswipe. This is the, the plus version. So I figured it would fit better with my Sunstreaker. But... Mm, yeah, he does. He is due for an upgrade. I did try the Bad Cube one. It wasn't that great. I had I had him for a few weeks. He was too th tall, too skinny. Uh, he just he just didn't look good. So I eventually sold him off. But he did one good thing, right? Was that they were able to modify the the chest, which this original one looks nice, but uh, his chest is just too wide. But anyway, hopefully we'll get a new one, a better one sooner rather than later behind him ratchet uh what can i say about ratchet um this isn't the best masterpiece toy that takara has ever come up with although i will say i don't know what it is whether it's the white but for some reason i know they always share the same mold ironhide and ratchet but for some reason ratchet whether it's masterpiece or chug or whatever i always find the ratchet versions a lot nicer i don't know maybe it's the head maybe it's the color who knows i kept that cardboard insert there because i thought it looked cool it's an um, it's hassle when you transform but you know he's displayed in robot form most of the time so it doesn't really matter and yeah episode for ratchet coming soon i thought of making a double episode between ratchet and ironhide but they're big enough characters to to merit their own so hopefully soon i'll get around to ratchet Next, we have one of my favorites, Braun. Who doesn't like Braun? He's one of the smallest of the original Autobot crew, but he's one of the strongest. And it was a journey to get my favorite Braun, the first one, obviously. I mean, he was supposed to be the strongest, but funny, his original G1 toy looked like one of the, the weakest with those scrawny arms and stuff. So I always wanted a, a Braun toy that matched what I saw in the cartoon. With Chug, first we got like this really puny Legends version, which, you know, it was the first one for its time. And then we got... What was that? A Titan's Return, which was okay. But we finally got the Studio Series 86, which covers my chug. For for the masterpiece, I tried use it, getting hench from iGears. Uh, couldn't decide whether it was a chug or a masterpiece. So that was sold out pretty quickly. Sold off pretty quickly. And I switched it out for Bad Cubes. Uh, what was it called? Bad Cubes Hunk? No, th no, no. This is Hunk. But anyway, Bad Cubes version, which was okay for its time. The, the proportions were kind of off. He looked a bit too chunky. And so, again, Fansoys came calling with their version, Hunk, and he looks pretty perfect for me. So, as far as I'm concerned, I'm pretty happy with my brawn. Up here behind, we got Jazz. Jive. Jive from Fansoys again. Uh, for the longest time, I had Make Toys version. Uh, uh, I keep forgetting their names. But anyway, I used to have the one from Make Toys, which was pretty good. I liked it. I liked it a lot. But, I don't know. Construction-wise, after a few years, it, he became kind of fiddly, especially with those sliding arms and stuff. So once Fans Toys came, Make Toys was tunish enough, but this guy just has, I don't know, has more personality in my book. Transformation, it's a toss-up. You know, some parts are, are, are better, some parts are worse, but I think overall it's a more solid toy than Make Toys. Downbeat, Downbeat, that's what it was called. Uh, so I'm quite happy with Jive. Check out my video for Jazz. Uh, and then we have Bumblebee. So for transparency's sake, this is not the official Masterpiece version. This is the KO. I had the original version 1 Masterpiece of Bumblebee, which I was quite happy with. Um, it was very toy accurate. And when this one came out, it came out to a lot of controversy. People hated like the feet and the back were, were a mess and the quality control and stuff. So I, I, I've, I avoided it. I'm considering it's high price and stuff. But when I got Cliff Jumper, which is another story, the original Bumblebee didn't really fit in with him. So when this KO came out, I figured cheap enough, you know, worth the risk, at least for the display, he fits better with Cliff Jumper. So I got him and it was quite a surprise. I mean, yes, his feet still suck and the back's really bad, but 
Quality wise, this guy is pretty solid for a KO, for a knockoff. No improvements from the original from what I know, but he's, he serves his purpose. And I don't know, he has, some people don't like it, but I think his face has got a lot more personality. And, you know, it's more fitting for Bumblebee. Uh, Spike and Chip. Chip from Sunstreaker. Spike from Bumblebee. Yeah, this guy came from with Bumblebee. So, yeah. And then, of course, we have Prime. So I made a whole video on how I found my ideal masterpiece, Optimus Prime. So this is Opt Leader from Transform Element. I opted <laughs> not to go with MP44 because of its high price, uh, even the KOs. I don't know. Design-wise, yes, he looks good, but the, the engineering looked like a nightmare. So I went with this guy. I thought he was cool, and I'm very happy with him. He's a bit blocky. Okay, sorry about that. First time recording unscripted and my wife had to walk in to change. So yeah, quick cut and now we're back. So where were we? Op Leader from Transform Element. So yeah, uh, I decided to go with him over Magic Square. Those were the two options back then. There are better versions, I think, better looking versions now, but I am very happy with this guy. So he remains my main prime for my main collection. Prowl. Okay, so... Like I said, my first Transformer was Blue Streak. I never did get a Prowl. I did end up getting Smokescreen. So this was the only Datsun brother that I didn't get originally. And for some reason, I don't know, maybe it's because I never got him. Uh, he's my favorite. Yeah, of course, he's the most used brother in, in a lot of the, the comics. And, and well, he didn't do much in the cartoon. But yeah, he's one of my favorites. This is the original release of the masterpiece. Sorry, I, I, I cannot for the life of me recall what number the masterpiece are. But this is the original release, not the tune version. It's nice for what it is. But yeah, I mean, this whole the Datsun stuff, the Datsun brothers, they're way overdue for an update. So I don't know whether it's Takara or whether it's a masterpiece version of a third-party version. I think some, I think it was DX9 which showed off theirs, which looks promising. So hopefully, I don't know, eventually this guy will be switched out. But for now, he's just perfectly fine. And then back here, we have Cliff Jumper. So this guy is the Fans Toys version, parkour. It took me forever to get a Cliff Jumper. My first Cliff Jumper was that really awful one from... Ugh. I can't even remember the name because they're only released. They released uh, a cliff jumper with a hubcap. And it was kind of just basically a reshell of the original MP version 1 of Bumblebee. And it was awful. The packaging was really nice. See, for the life of me, Ace Toys. I think it was called Ace Toys. I could be wrong, but yeah, that was my first cliff jumper, which I got because it was the only one there. And I'm impatient and I just wanted to complete my G1 uh, season 1 display. So yeah. But once a better version came out, which was x Transbots Toro, Ace Toys was sold off and I had Toro for the longest time. And Toro was okay, but again, proportions-wise, he kind of fit in more with, again, uh, toy aesthetic. So more like version 1 of Bumblebee. And when Fans Toys showed this off, I couldn't resist. He looks great, but as far as engineering goes, he's a bit... Uh, fiddly and I don't know QC wise his his arms are all floppy and stuff but you know he looks really good and I'm happy with him he's not as bad as people make him out to be but he's not one of their best speaking of one of their best Takara okay so this is Wheeljack another major Autobot that I just never took a liking to I mean he was okay as an adult I got to appreciate him more as like the mad scientist and stuff but for some reason as a kid like the the whole Lancia Stratos is that what it's called his race car didn't look that great to me it looked kind of weird and boxy and curvy at the same time I just couldn't figure it out and um, I wasn't a big fan I mean it's distinctive but I was never really a big fan of his head design with those with those ears and stuff and I mean to be fair the original G1 toy was not very good I mean well to be fair Sunstreakers was probably one of the worst but they, they kind of shared the same engineering uh, and so Wheeljacks wasn't that much better so yeah as a as a kid I never took a liking too much to Wheeljack uh, I appreciate him a lot more now and he's probably gonna be getting his episodes sooner rather than later but anyway this version i'm surprised that no other company has come out with one but i guess i mean takara did a really awesome job with this guy he's solid he's one of the best i would say best 
Takara Masterpiece cars out there. I opted for the, this is the original release. I didn't bother getting the plus version. I just thought it was too plain. I like, you know, I like his colors. So yeah, Wheeljack. And next to him is probably everyone's least favorite member of the season one crew. Fine, maybe I'm being a bit unfair. I mean, like he's always lumped together with Grump, but you know, Gears you could defend for being, you know, he, it's just a front that he puts. He likes to complain. But yeah, he's got a heart of gold, blah, 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 all that stuff. But this guy, this guy is like a whiner. He just whines and whines and whines. So yeah, never a big fan of the character. His design is, well, you can see, it's kind of odd. His colors are kind of weird, orange and, and, and some purplish blue. But yeah, and his head, Ugh, look at that head. It's like, a, it's like a mushroom helmet. But anyway, yeah, so Huffer. I don't like the character, but this is one of, I have to admit, this is one of Fanstoy's best designs. I keep saying that, but no, in terms of innovation, because like, you know, usually Huffer, I mean, you know, the back is supposed to be the cab of his truck uh, and, you know, the feet are the back. But for some reason, these guys reverse engineered it and this toy, his name is Rig, is like the opposite. So, sorry, my dog from below, again, live stuff. But anyway, back to Huffer. His feet actually form the front of his truck. The top of this, the back of this part flips to the other side and forms the cab with the feet. And the back, I mean, his head is actually, this, this, this portion is actually the back of the truck. So it's pretty cool. It sounds like a nightmare when I'm describing it, but it actually works. So yeah, not the greatest character in the world, but I love this version of Huffer, this toy. And one of my favorites, okay, wait, hold on. So my wife is driving out to pick up my daughters from school. So the dogs are gonna go crazy. So I'm gonna cut off right here and get back to you. And we're back. So Ironhide, yeah. Speaking of Autobots, I'm not a big fan of Ironhide. So I got a lot of flack for my episode on Ironhide calling him an a-hole. But you know, I don't know, as a kid, I never latched onto his personality, the gruff veteran. I just thought he was kind of delusional and impetuous. He just didn't act like a, a wise and old veteran in my book. But anyway, his design was kind of plain. I think I mentioned it before, but this is not one of Takara's best. I don't know what it is. It's a frustration of mine. I mean, these guys, this guy and Ratchet, they transform into vans. So I don't know why it's a hard thing to make a decently proportioned robot. This, if you're wondering, is a modified version, him and Ratchet. You notice they don't have those panels on the hips. Yeah, it was a kit that was sold a few years back. It kind of helps. It makes, I don't know, for me, it makes the toy better, but I mean, it's still Ironhide. So not a big fan but uh, i appreciate his role in the cartoons and stuff like that so next we have hound okay so hound as i mentioned in my video he was supposed to be the central character that all us kids were supposed to latch onto before this guy took his job but yeah hound is one of those easy to like you know characters Considering he transforms into a military jeep, you would think he would be more of a combat expert, but he was portrayed more as a, you know, pacifist and, you know, someone who, for God's sake, Rumble kicked his ass in the cartoon. Someone half his size. But anyway, yeah, Hound. This is not the Takara version, I'm sure you can tell. Um, this is, again, fans' toys, Willis. So I opted not to get the Takara. I'm very happy with Willis. He's solid. Uh, he does its part. He's not too slavishly tuned. And, well, I heard all the nightmares about the QC qualities of the, the Takara version, so I decided to stick with Willis, and I'm quite happy with him. And next to him is his bud, uh, Mirage. So Mirage was one of the few G1 toys I actually got as a kid. My, my, my sister, who lived in the States for a while, brought him, brought him home for me one Christmas. And so, yeah, I had Mirage. So he is one of the few G1 characters, Season 1 characters, that I do have some nostalgic connection to. So anyone who, any serious collector knows that Ocular Max, their version of Masterpiece Mirage Sphinx was one of the first third-party Masterpiece toys. And yes, I got him and um, he was great. You know, he served his purpose for the longest time on my shelf and like with everyone's shelf because he was really that good considering he was one of the first or the first. But anyway, when Transform Element came up with their version Speedstar, of course, uh, 
in line with the times, a more tune, accurate version of Mirage. I, I went for him, but he was kind of a mess to transform, especially his legs. He looked good, both modes, but again, when fan stories came with this guy, Phantasm, I went with him. You could argue that Speedstar by Transform Element looks better. If, I mean, if you're going for a tune aesthetic, but I like this guy's transformation and his engineering better. I mean, he's just a lot easier to transform. And I was sold on the whole, you can stuff his whole shoulder cannon into his, inside his car, which uh, in, in theory, it sounds good, but in, in practice didn't really work out too great. I ended up, I think, chipping one of the, the fins of my rockets, trying to fit it in, but yeah, good idea, but it could have been executed better. But as a whole, I'm very happy with Phantasm. And I'm sure you can see this ugly bugger over here, Wind Charger. Okay, I love Wind Charger. I think he's one of the most underrated Season 1 Autobots. Um, he's got a unique magnetic power and stuff like that. But for some reason, I don't know. He's always one of the last Autobots to get a decent update. So chug-wise, the, the, the last decent one I think was Titan's Return, which was okay. But considering they're redoing all their mini-bots, he's the last one. He's the last one that we need in the, in the new Siege Earthrise scale mini-bots. So still waiting for that Wind Charger. And this guy, this guy was also one of the first Masterpiece Transformers to be released by X-Transbots. And he looks decent, but he is one of the worst designed, considering he's a mini-bot, he's one of the worst designed toys ever. Um, everyone keeps mentioning his feet are a nightmare to transform, but I would argue that his hands, his arms are even worse, and everything else in between isn't that much better. But he's the only masterpiece version of Wind Charger we have so far. And I am dying to replace this guy, dying. Fans toys have pretty much given us, you know, all the mini bots. I mean, we don't need a Bumblebee, but like the original six mini bots, they've given us excellent versions. So I'm just waiting. I mean, come on, wind charger. We need a better wind charger. Okay, enough of this guy. Um, all right, so you must be wondering who this guy is. I mean, if you don't know who this guy is, he wasn't a member of the Autobot crew. Um, this is the Omnibot Overdrive. So he wasn't a Transformer sold in retail back in the day. He was a mail-away figure with um, his two other... There were three Omnibots. It was this guy, Overdrive, Camshaft, and Downshift. And of the three, this guy was the best looking. And I always loved this guy because he transformed into a Ferrari, which even as a kid, I was a huge fan of the Ferrari. So it was a frustration of mine that none of the original car robots transformed into a Ferrari. So anyway, this one is from X Transbots, finally giving the Omnibot some love and still waiting for the other two. But in the meantime, I figured stick him in with the G1 crew because he kind of balances it out. I mean, like I'm a stickler for balance and like with there being what, six, 13 original Autobots, you know, you, you had an imbalance. So it really bugged me big time with my display that, you know, I didn't have the equal number of Autobots by Prime's side. So I figured, you know, stick this guy in. He balances it out. Uh, who knows if X Transbots will ever give us the other two. But if they do, it's two. So one on each side. So yes, they weren't part of the original crew. But I'll count them because aesthetically they fit. Uh, their, their cars were of the time. And I mean, every Autobot crew is always better with a, with a Ferrari. So yeah. Uh, I think this video has gotten a bit too long, so I will save my Decepticons for another... Ooh, look at that dust. I will save my Decepticons for, for another episode. But for now, yeah, this is my G1 display. Autobots Season 1. And that's it. See you next time.